and we're live hey y'all happy tuesday oh i'm trying to see if i can copy this comment but now it doesn't want to we might not have a little pinned comment at the bottom guys it's because i i tried to copy it in just now and it just it just didn't happen for me which is totally fine um but welcome 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 to the miss usa instagram live hello king king garcia I remember you because I was looking through the questions um, that people submitted and you said that you had to wake up at five o'clock in the morning local time in order to join. So I'm glad that you did because we have a really special guest on today. Her name is Deshauna Barber. She's Miss USA 2016. She is um, she was an incredibly accomplished and talented Miss USA. I see you waving, girl. And we're live. Hello, hello. <laughs> Every time hey, I see girl. you, it's like a reunion. <laughs> what did you say? I said, every time I see you, it's like a reunion. It is a reunion. It yes, is. yes. I love this hairstyle, ma'am. Oh, yes. Thank you. I just did it like three days ago. You did it yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I usually do my own hair, my, my braids, you know. My God, a queen. I could not do my own braids if I tried. It would be too Well, your hair is a little bit longer than mine. I've got about two inches of length right now because I chopped off. <laughs> hair off now you you might take uh, about three or four days to braid up but. Yeah, it, it would take a while but even if even with that like I'm just not that good at braiding my braids just never really stay that's why my sister always does my hair I'm just like whatever she'll figure it out it's um, good to have a, a family hairstylist uh, <laughs> yeah nice. exactly exactly we overwork her to I, death I tunnel. yeah like I would great it would be wonderful to have a family member that could do this <laughs> exactly so but, your sister I feel like I Instagram a few times and you tagged her um, and I think some some uh, hair tips and stuff like that you like revert people to her page so that's really cool yeah yeah because people always ask me like you know how did you you know grow your hair so long and I'm like really just my sister I just go to her and she tells me things and I do them so that's, right. that's what whatever we Sissy Page says that's what goes um, yeah. but we're so excited that you're joining us today seriously we have so many questions I posted a story on my personal Instagram and I was like hey guys I'm going on with Deshauna tomorrow and you know if you guys have specific questions send them to me and like my account blew up I just I got so many questions um so we're gonna jump right into it uh, okay. tons of questions about your military experience uh, because you were the first um woman to win Miss USA while actively serving in the military what was that like knowing that like did you know standing on the stage when you won that you'd hit that milestone or was it like afterwards that you found out um, I think that probably afterwards, mm, 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 well, I definitely actually during, I, I think that once, because I think a lot of people assume, and you know this, when you're competing for Miss USA, there's this assumption that you know what videos are going to play, you know, <laughs> what are going to be highlighted. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I knew that I was going to talk about the military a lot, but I didn't necessarily know that the telecast was going to talk about the military a lot. Yeah. So I that I really started to realize once I got called in the top 15 and they played the video and and all these things um and even uh seeing the what do you call it the it's, it's not the road to Miss USA video I think that is it um I don't know if like your UCAP statement or whatever well when they when they come to your town and they film you oh um, yeah 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 they didn't do that in my year but I heard that they did they, they used to do that they would send a camera crew yeah, they'll send a camera crew each time. And, you know, they filmed a bunch of stuff as well, but you you don't know until the actual video comes out what it is that they're highlighting. But obviously, mm -hmm. I tried to plant as much military stuff as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but it's still their ultimate decision. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that during the broadcast, I got a chance to really say, okay, we're really going to highlight this. And, you know, mm -hmm. going to history if, it, if, in fact, I am privileged enough to win. So when it, when it actually hit the news the next day and – all the text messages and articles. I'm like, oh, we're really about to be able to, to highlight, you know, mm -hmm. the, the service members do and, and talk about PTSD. And I'm really going to, to, to use this platform to be able to speak about the things that I want to speak about. Hey, Demoris, I yeah. love you. Those are my favorite fans. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we always have our faves. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, like I was saying, so yeah, I, I definitely think that during the broadcast was, was, was a moment for me to really see how big this was going to be. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you spent a lot of your year talking about being in the military and advocating for people in the military, which is really cool to see. Yes, uh, I, I think that that's always the great thing to have, uh, whatever, whatever your, your, your passion is, you know, your philanthropy, mm -hmm. 
um, that that obviously the, the military card was something that people were so bothered by, which to this day, I still don't care. And it's 2020. But I think that we have to understand what it is that we love. We have to understand what it is that uh, we want to dedicate our lives to. And we mm -hmm. have to commit to that regardless of opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so I always love seeing uh, the things that people focus on during their reign um, and that they carry that out all the way, you know, through the rest of their lives, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it's always great that my year was spent doing that. Yeah, exactly. No, no, I, I totally agree. And I think that's that's one of the things that happened for me. Like when I won, I talked about Dress for Success. And mm -hmm. I ended up being an impact ambassador afterwards because they were like, thanks for mentioning us. And I was like, I mean, I love y'all. Why wouldn't I? Um, exactly. But it was really cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, and another question that, that a few people have asked is something that we share in common, that Miss USA wasn't like, you know, our second pageant. It was like, I don't know, my like 14th or something, uh, because I competed in my state competition for Miss North Carolina USA three times and competed mm -hmm. in the Miss America organization two times at state before that. So like by the time I got to Miss USA, I was like, I've won, I've lost, a lot has happened. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd been on sort of a similar road as well in, in DC. Yes, you know, and it's, it's so interesting that you say that because my Miss USA class 2016, we consider ourselves like not the losers or the senior citizens of pageantry, but all of us had competed so much. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. My Miss Utah had uh, Teal. She competed like eight times. My Miss Ohio, um, Megan competed like eight times. Mm -hmm. All of us had been competing for years. And uh, by the time we got to the stage, we were just thankful to be here. Like, <laughs> even if we don't walk away with the crown, mm -hmm. we're just like, I'm just happy to even walk up in this place. Right. So many of us had been at it for so many years, and we were yep. all the the older side of the age scheme, like you are as well. We're like we're all twenty six, twenty seven. We on our way out. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, we were about to age out already. Mm -hmm. um, so it was like slim to slim to nothing chance. Um, so it's 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 good to me. I had that experience in D.C. I started in Virginia um, and, and moved to D.C. I've been working in D.C. for years. And, and made that transition and started competing in DC. And um, so thankful that I did because, you know, it's the nation's capital. It, 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 it's so many decisions and, 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 and huge, huge decision makers are in DC. And it's, it's such an influential place, you know, around mm -hmm. the world. So it, not only to be a soldier, but to, to be representing the nation's capital, it was just so, mm -hmm. so incredible and so impactful. And, it meant a lot to me, but you know, I had started when I was 19 doing, doing pageants and I didn't win until I was 26. So it was about seven years of uh, losing, losing, losing. And everyone's like, you were probably making top five or four up. No girl, I was barely placing. <laughs> it builds character though. It builds character. It That's the important thing. And somebody said something that I totally forgot about. Okay, so Morgan, I hope, I hope I'm saying your name right, says that Miss 52 was a longtime competitor. It was great to see Alex. So that was your year when we had Miss 52. Yeah, that was my year. So my God, I remember that. I remember watching because I was like, oh, my God, is she going to make top 15? We were all like, she has to make top 15 because she's Miss yeah. 52. And uh, it was just really cool to see her compete and to hear about her background and everything. Like, it was really cool yeah, to watch. What was super cool about Alex is that she was Miss Oklahoma. So uh, when Olivia Jordan won Miss USA, Alex was her first runner up. So she inherited the crown. Yeah. Uh, so for, for her to even be able to go from the title to actually having the opportunity to compete, I thought was great. I love Alex. She's actually really, really, really cool. We have a Miss USA uh, group chat, 2016 group chat mm -hmm. we often. Um, and I actually saw Alex at my roommate, Miss Kansas, uh, Vicki Wiggins, who's now Vicki Moore because she got married, saw her at their wedding. Um, so that was just really cool. It was like a cute little reunion. Hopefully somebody else gets married again so we can all reunite. Mm -hmm. um, a few weddings this year, but obviously COVID-19 hit and then the world came crumbling down. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's always good to have um, great memories, but that was a, a, mm -hmm. a, a very awesome year and we also called it a first runner-up year surprisingly because there were a lot of first runner-ups who won it was a lot of first runner-ups that happened to come into the competition so our miss washington the original miss washington there was something that happened so our first runner-up had to take over uh for miss washington that year and then so north carolina carolina 
Yes, I do remember. Oh my gosh, because that was Allie, who was so sweet. Yeah. I yeah. remember after I won Miss North Carolina USA, I remember sitting down and talking with Allie about yeah. her experience um, as Miss North Carolina USA. So, so a little background for, for everybody who's watching. So Deshaun is year 2016. Um, uh, one of my formers, a former Miss North Carolina <laughs> USA, um, came to the Miss USA competition um, but was dealing with some issues and ended up leaving the, the competition. So just some personal issues that I'm sure she'd be able to address if you guys message her. Um, but uh, so she ended up leaving the competition and her first runner up, um, Devin, came to the competition and ended up competing in her stead. I remember yeah. that. She had like one day's notice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I definitely remember watching that. <laughs> So great. Um, mm -hmm. even when she, up, she was so sweet, very into it. And, and Devin was just really, really, really kind. And, and we were like, girl, you, you definitely maintain a pageant diet. You know, <laughs> I'm saying because this was like way this it wasn't even close to the net to the next state competition. Because I remember she said that she, she already had a dress and everything because she was preparing for the next Miss North Carolina USA. And I, I like seriously, if somebody asked me to walk on stage in a swimsuit right now, it would be tragic. It would be terrible. I would embarrass myself. Yes. I would be so, like, it would be, so the fact that she could go out there and look phenomenal and, <laughs> like, actually be ready, I was like, okay, girl, do your thing. My God. Yeah. You saw her, I was like, girl, you, 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 you knew, didn't you? You knew. <laughs> you look too good, girl. Her, her body was amazing. I was just like, oh. Yeah. Another competition, uh, more competition. And it's, it's so funny because, actually, I talk about this a lot when it comes to, uh, to Miss Hawaii my year um she like we were all so jealous of her <laughs> I hate that I always say this but it's the truth we were all so jealous of her and you know like I was telling you that the, the whole senior citizen thing mm -hmm. um it was her first year it was her first year winning oh my Hawaii. god your first runner up yeah my first runner yeah. up it was her first year winning Miss Hawaii her name was Chelsea right Hawaii. You know how it is with pageants where and we talk about this a lot with pageant girls where mm -hmm. after you've competed so often you have this like how do you put it um you're, i know you exactly what you mean without you even saying it <laughs> you what do you say i said i know exactly what you mean without you even saying it <laughs> yeah you know where i'm going right where you're like conditioned yes. to overthink everything yes and you, you're taking these moments so seriously and you're just mm -hmm. like into it and every earring and every shoe and every nail color, you're very hypercritical of yourself. Yep. And, and Chelsea Harden, my year, she walked in and this girl didn't have a care in the world. She was just happy-go-lucky, not stressed, you know, mm -hmm. she was beautiful. Mm -hmm. She was really like authentic in herself. And she got first runner up and she, we just knew she was the biggest competition coming for us so every every time i looked at her i'm like oh i love her but i can't breathe because <laughs> <laughs> she was just so authentic i couldn't stand it i mm -hmm. i remember those like neophyte days where it's like you're just so fresh in the world and exactly you know, everything is just so genuine mm -hmm. and oh my mm -hmm. gosh so just, exactly. Let's go back to the senior citizen thing of, of us being the elderly ones competing. That you have those newbies like the exactly. Olivia Copels, who's like an alien. To, you I know. know. When first, 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 and never has to deal with the conditioning of loss. Exactly. So, like, I'm so jealous of people like that. <laughs> yeah, because I, I was I was thinking about it because I think most other recent Miss USA's have competed several times and lost. <laughs> a lot of times before getting to the USA stage and actually winning. And so I, I tell people that all the time, like, like girls will ask me, you know, what am I, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing? Like, I need to change something. And I'm like, just, just keep competing. Yeah. <laughs> just keep competing. There'll be different judges, get better and you're going to be fine. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It, it prepares you. It prepares you because being Miss USA, you, you already know how it is. It, it comes mm -hmm. with this level of weight. And, and, and sometimes you have to grow into the grow into the sash you know that ability is not something that you know you're just born with sometimes you have to grow into it so when girls are like i'm on my second loss and i got third runner up it's like girl give it some time yeah yeah exactly so i always mm -hmm. tell you never give up regret is hard you don't want to deal with it trust me just mm -hmm. keep Exactly, exactly. And I see there are some questions that you guys are sending into the comments. If you have questions, drop them in the question box below. 
I'll be checking those periodically so I can make sure to bring some of your questions up. Um, but one of the questions that somebody sent in earlier uh, was about cyberbullying because I know <laughs> that I don't even think it's just us. Like, I think it's every Miss USA, every Miss Universe, every title holder at some point in time deals with cyberbullying. And it is tragic. Um, it's annoying to see. It's sad to see, especially when there are trolls who you know are just like saying things to rile you up. How did you deal with that during your year? Because I feel like it's something I thought I had a handle on and then I won and I was like, oh, this is new. This is yeah. different than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, you know, I don't even know if I handled cyberbullying very well. Um, <laughs> I, my, my year was quite like stressful. You know, every everyone's year is stressful, but obviously mm -hmm. my mom passed away that year. So mm -hmm. I was you know, even more sensitive to, to um, criticism and I was just sensitive in general to the point where I just became super numb that year um so what i would do and I, I still have my block list i don't know if you can tell when you go on your phone and you block people on instagram you can look at that yep. list <laughs> so what i would do is i wouldn't even obviously i was prepared to go off on people and cuss people out that was always my uh, go-to but you know you can't do that when you're miss usa you can do it now <laughs> uh, okay uh so i would just immediately block people just back to back to back and i i think right now i have about 600 people <laughs> um because it'd be the same people um and it's it's unfortunate and, and obviously everyone has whatever their cyber bullies hate you most for yeah. and you know people hated me most because they wanted chelsea to win um and uh everyone was rooting for miss hawaii which is great mm -hmm. um but i think that she didn't win. So we, we have to still be able to embrace the, the title holder. There's a lot of girls that have won Miss USA that I did not want to win, that I was rooting for somebody else. But there's still a re respect fa factor that I have for the person with the crown. And I just don't know if I got that same respect factor. Even to this day, you'll see posts. I'm surprised there are none under your flyer. Uh, usually there's, oh, really? why you should have won. You oh, know, yeah. Thing that I'm posted on. Yeah. Is, well, I think there there's so many people who deal with that. I think there are so many people because yeah, you're right. I mean, everybody goes in with your favorite or maybe somebody from your state that you're supporting. And so for years and years after that, everybody's like, well, so-and-so should have won. I'm like, well, they didn't. Um, somebody else did. And yeah. to continue posting that under my page, like, oh, somewhere else with that. I just, I don't, I don't want to be your platform for, for, for that. And uh, it is really frustrating. And you have the same approach that I do. Like I've gotten really good about, about just like deleting comments and blocking yeah. people because I think it's one thing to post criticism and to say like, oh, I didn't like her gown or oh, I think this this hairstyle would have been better. It's quite another to throw in like racist commentary. To th like people would put like throw up emojis underneath my pictures and I'd be like, guys, like go somewhere else with that. <laughs> yeah. not the time or the place. It's just come on now. It's, it's, it's definitely takes some, uh, you know, you kind of got to get acclimated to it. And obviously you have by now, but I think like even the first few months, it's tragic, you know, the, the experience. And even when you first won, I was in the Bahamas uh, with my first runner up. Uh, I'm not, oh, really? Sorry, not with my first runner up. <laughs> I'm okay. going, I was in the Bahamas with Vicky Wiggins, who, Vicky Moore, I keep saying Wiggins, who was Miss, who's my roommate at Miss USA, she was Miss Oh, uh, okay. Uh, she, her husband is Bahamian, uh, so she moved to the Bahamas uh, mm -hmm. a few years after Miss USA. Anyway, mm -hmm. so I flew to the Bahamas with intention to watch Miss USA with her, and she had a whole watch party and all of that, and the-, the Somebody's way, talking about your watch parties. Oh, we're gonna get to that, yes, yeah, so oh yeah. Questions, <laughs> but um, when you won, I was like, girl, you better prepare. I got my video ready. I'm like, we about to really turn up. Uh, I was I was 100% prepared to create an army around you um, and a lot of other title holders because I just knew not only was the criticism coming, but so was the racism. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the responsibility of every former Miss USA to go to bat, especially um, against racism. Mm -hmm. um, I think that that's incredibly important for us uh, because you know this this narrative that Miss USA can't be black more than one time in a decade mm -hmm. is is outrageous to me. Um, mm -hmm. And I feel like most of the majority of the complaints come when the the title holder is black. Mm -hmm. um, and they, well, she won because they were going for diversity that year. As if she can't win on her own merit is beyond me. 
So, you know, I, I, I was 110% prepared. I knew the trolls were coming. I may have sent you a message. I don't remember if I did. Um, I may have. Uh, just say, hey, I mean, sure. you need me. <laughs> I think you did. Because it was like a, it wasn't like a short message. It was like a book. And I was I, like, oh, no, it's coming. Like, this is my warning. Yeah. <laughs> Prepare. I do remember um, that. And it's always good to have uh, uh, some level, especially girls that have experienced it before, uh, someone to just say, hey, if you need someone to talk to, if you need someone to cuss somebody else out, since so you're Miss USA and I'm not anymore, I'm here for you. I'm here to be the bodyguard. I'm here to help you out. Um, yeah. And I think that that's really great um, that we at least had that starting off relationship. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And it was really helpful to know that like there is truly a sisterhood. And to know that there are other people who understood what I was about to go into and had my back. And there's, it's interesting. I mean, this is, I think this is a good conversation to have in that somebody sent a message and said, let me see if I can find it and read it. Because I remember the gist of it. Uh, okay. So she says, hi, um, I'm a white woman. What can I do to help combat racism? Uh, because I think that there are a lot of people, Black people, who have constantly been, uh, constantly experienced racism. So yeah. we're almost like experienced in responding to it. But I think there are some white people who do want to help, but just don't know where to start and yeah. are almost afraid of asking a question that comes off as ignorant and like just, just seriously want to help but are afraid um, about where to start. So where would, like what advice would you give to this person, this woman who says, I'm white, I want to help combat racism, where do I start? I would say combat racism. Um, I think that oftentimes, you know, when people say, how do I do this? You just do it. You, you kind of, the, this, this level of fear um, that comes from people of color in general, where it feels like sometimes we're the only ones fighting. And sometimes I have to go in and I look at comments and I see posts and I'm like, okay, it's not just us. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. able to go and see Facebook posts. I'm able to see people that are... Um, posting about, you know, there was just a recent shooting in Minnesota, which is, you know, I was raised in Minnesota, you know, probably people don't know. Uh, I spent about 10 years in Apple Valley, Minnesota growing up. Oh, I did not know that. That's awesome. crazy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, from, uh, elementary to uh, senior year in high school, I lived in Apple Valley, Minnesota in Burnsville. Um, so there was a shooting actually, or it wasn't a shooting, excuse me, um, a man was uh, knelt on uh, by a police officer. In moments like that, you know, it's heartbreaking as a person of color. It's heartbreaking. You know, my, my boyfriend is, is a black man. Um, I'm a black woman. I have black brothers and, and, and father and, 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 you know, my family is black. So mm -hmm. the fear that we have uh, walking out into the world is, is a genuine fear that mm -hmm. you understand and that people of color understand is this, 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 this question of whether or not we're in this alone. So being an advocate and um, speaking out is the way that you're able to combat, combat racism. Mm -hmm. I think in this current state of the world right now, racists are not afraid of being blatantly racist anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't know where we went wrong, but you know, racists mm -hmm. used to sit in the shadows, you know, mm -hmm. they used to be back there. We didn't even know. Now they're just out running rampant, got, you know, flags, flying Nazi flags in the air, you know, Confederate flags and all these things. And it's, it's just really important to understand that once someone thinks that racism is okay, they will continue to be blatantly racism, be blatantly racist, and their racism will intensify. Mm -hmm. So if people within their own community are... Um, saying that racism is not okay, they have a little bit more of a level of fear to come out with their racism. And they even might be more open to conversation or uh, research or something along those lines that might be able to change their point of view mm -hmm. on how they see black people or other people of color. So I say for all communities out there, if you're looking to combat racism, combat racism, mm -hmm. speak out, talk about it. Be, be someone that, that's, that's, that's marching down the street for, um, you know, unwarranted deaths of, un, of unarmed men and women. Um, mm -hmm. What exactly, are you speaking out or are you quiet? Because I, I just did a post um, where, I don't remember it verbatim, where I said, um, contrary to popular belief, 
being a racist and what's the rest of it? Being a racist. Let me read it out. Contrary to popular belief, That's being it. a racist, blind eye to racism is the same thing. And it is the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you're not saying anything, then I'm just assuming that you don't have a problem with it. You're not actively working to fix it. Therefore, I think that you're with it. So mm -hmm. it's important to step up. It's important to say something. And it's important to hold other people in your community accountable for their silence and for their contributions to the system that racism is built on. And I, I can, we can talk about this for days because I, I, a lot of my, my motivational speeches are diversity and inclusion. It talks about racism and sexism and xenophobia and implicit bias. This is a conversation yeah. that mm -hmm. I constantly have. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I can go on for days, but that yeah. is my well, and I and I agree. And this is funny, Paula, <laughs> Paula Shiga. Hey, Paula. She said, "Hi, she said, Hi Deshana. Will you ever run for office? I will move there just to vote for you." <laughs> I think all of us would, Miss Paula. Um, but I agree. I agree. I think. I think you. Lately, we have seen more people um, being outspoken about their racism. But on the other hand, I think we have seen swift responses especially from employers and businesses who refuse to be associated with yeah. racism. For example, um, I think it was yesterday the story broke about Amy Cooper, um, a woman who was in the Ramble in Central Park, just yes. a walk away from my own apartment. So that, that really personalized it for me and, and brought it home for me. Um, was in this park, her dog was unleashed. Um, even though there are very clear signs, I've seen them myself that say like, you have to put your dog on a leash. Um, yeah. And Amy Cooper is a white woman, a black man. Um, Christian Cooper, I believe is his name. They just happened to share a last name. Um, walked up and said, ma'am, will you put your dog on a leash? And she refused. And so he pulls out his phone and starts recording her. And she's like, please stop recording me. I'm gonna call the police. And so she calls the police and says, hi, an African American man is threatening my life. And right. it was terrifying to see that. Um, on the other hand, I think the same day or maybe a day afterwards, um, there was a post from the shelter where she got her dog saying that Amy had surrendered her dog uh, because while this was happening, she's holding the dog by its neck and the dog, it looks like it's choking. You can hear it like kind of screeching. Poor dog, so yes. she surrendered her dog and then her employer also posted and said, um, Amy Cooper has been placed on administrative leave while we um, investigate this. And so we see this very swift response I um, mean, we see businesses responding to this because the community is outraged. And oftentimes that community you see will be black people, but I've been, re it's reassuring to also see white people join in and say like, okay, I'm white, but I also don't tolerate racism. So if you're white and you're looking for like, you know, to this woman's question, if you're white and you're like, where do I start? I wanna combat racism too. I mean, the first point is just like, you know, speaking out, joining that community that's like, I don't, I'm not putting up with this. And I don't like to see it in my community. I don't like to see it in my post. That's step number one. Um, and just, you know, educating yourself about the um, issues that are nuanced that Black people face in this country is, is really, really important, too. And we see that in pageants a lot, just like you said. I mean, a lot of the, the winners who are women of color, we receive racist messages, racist comments, and it is unacceptable. Yes. It, 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 <laughs> yeah, when it does play back to pageantry, it, it is one of those frustrating things and I think that's actually one of the things I appreciate most um, about my, my love for uh, Olivia Jordan and like Nina Sanchez. Mm -hmm. they're, they're usually the, the first ones along with uh, other people that are, are jumping into the comment section. Yeah. Hey, this is not okay. Yes, they will post about it. I've seen Nina do that a number of times. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, I love and I, I think that that's why I love them most and, and Kyra um, because we, we're I think we do a really good job at jumping in. Um, I think we try to do it in our own way. Um, but I, I always think it's incredibly important for us. And, and this is, you know, as pageant girls are watching and all of that, we're supposed to be a community. You know, it, for those that don't know, we're supposed to be looking out for each other. And I think that that's what comes with these like small spaces of communities and I can go on a tangent again, but that that's, what's great about these small spaces of communities is that sometimes, the, the, these voices that we have, we can use them to be able to say that, hey, we are the predecessor of this person and you shouldn't, why are you talking like this? Why, why mm -hmm. is this conversation? Why are we still bullying knowing mm -hmm. that this, this the, the, the platform of pageantry is based off of women empowerment? Mm -hmm. What is going on? 
Um, if exactly. you don't like her, just be quiet. You know, mm -hmm. there are mm -hmm. a lot of people I don't like, and I just stay quiet. I don't have anything to say. People say, how do you feel about this person? I have nothing to say. No worries. Talking, give it a year, <laughs> and maybe you'll knife the next person. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, playing back to the, the situation in New York, yeah, I saw that. Very frustrating. I think that that's also one of those things that maybe other communities can think about when it comes to combating racism. You can start by not calling the police for no reason. Uh, mm -hmm. That would be great. You have to be able to learn as adults, and I think we learn it when it's, we, we understand it when it's convenient, mm -hmm. is de-escalating situations. You know, oftentimes we understand how to have a human conversation with people. Why is it that when we reach a level of frustration and maybe that person is not the same color as us, we resort to calling the police? Mm -hmm. It does not make sense. The police are not supposed to end like troublesome conversations or frustrating yeah. moments. They're supposed to help with crime. Yeah, with <laughs> emergencies. They are emergency response. It's the yes. purpose. Yeah. yeah, so why are you calling the police? Because someone asked you to put your dog in a leash. Like, that's crazy. Exactly. So exactly. if I how to combat, you know, being able to talk to other communities, other people within your community hey maybe this is not a moment to call the police it's just not necessary mm. how about you be an adult and have a conversation um, exactly police are walking into it so coming from me with who's in the military if we hear that you're being threatened we're now walking into this situation thinking that there is a threat which mm. in turn is going to cause us to be on our p's and q's and possibly pull out our taser mm. or our weapons yep so if it's not a threat and it's just a conversation, why am I here? That, that mm -hmm. would be the first thing that I would be asking. And sometimes people go into handcuffs and stuff like that before any questions are really asked because they're trying to do the escalator. They're trying to prevent threat. So, you know, girl, I'm, I will go on for days. Exactly. Right well, so. and, and it's, a, it's a great conversation. And honestly, I think we should probably do another live just so we can address that. Because it's, I mean, it's a huge, yeah. it's a huge topic that, that yeah, I think is, is worth our time. Um, but I do want to make sure that we end this at 5.45 because <laughs> Rima and I had a live last week. Oh, yes. and I thought, so I know that, that Instagram lives have a limit of one hour. And so we were getting close to an hour. I think we were like at 44 minutes and the live just shut off. And then we oh, lost no. everything. I know, so sad. So I want to make sure that we end before 5.45 because I, I, it makes me wonder if like the limit is actually 45 minutes. And there are tons of other questions that people ask and tons of questions that people want to hear from you about. Obviously, being Miss USA provides you with a huge platform to talk with other people about important topics. There are tons of people in the comments that are saying this is a great platform. It really is. Um, so when you finished being Miss USA, when you gave up your crown, um, you started in an incredible career um, being a public speaker, um, traveling across the world. And now you serve as the CEO of a nonprofit. So can you talk about, you know, that transition from being Miss USA to being a highly visible public speaker and a boss, literally and figuratively a boss? <laughs> Thanks, hon. Yeah, I, um, the transition was hard. You know, I think that social media makes a lot of, a lot of our lives look really easy, but it's, it's really mm -hmm. not. Um, I, I started off probably my first year, you know, walking out of Miss USA I, I walked in Miss USA as soon as the crown on my head. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be an actress. I'm about to be <laughs> doing it. I'm really about to be an actress, girl. That's what I thought. So mm -hmm. then uh, the crown went on my head and then the cameras and the red carpets and all the attention. And I'm like, okay, maybe this isn't for me. Maybe I kind of like like normality and all these things. Mm -hmm. So um, I spoke at the Steve and Marjorie Harvey uh, mentorship camp in Atlanta. And I they just said, hey, go up there and... and like a hundred girls from the metropolitan area go up, go up there and just tell them about your life um and that's what i did i went up for about 30 minutes told them about my life this was like october of 2016 my mom had just passed away like a month before that i was talking about that in the speech too and i walked off the stage and someone walked up to me um i think it was it was bridget i think it might have been bridget that came with me that year uh to the She's one of, she was one of the, no, she was in charge of social media, but she was some of, mm. sometimes my chaperone to some of the events. Uh, if Bridget, if you're here, I love you. I um, love Bridget. I think it was Bridget, it had to have been, but I think she walked up to me and said, hey, you know, that sounds like a motivational speech. And I was like, huh? And she was like, 
I really think you should consider being a speaker. Or, or it could have been Emily, maybe. You know, this guy might be wrong. It was Emily or, or Bridget. Anyway, so I was like, nah, you know, I don't want to be a motivational speaker. I don't know if that's my thing. <laughs> then I, I looked up how much motivational speakers make. And then I'm like, well, maybe. You know, maybe I'll <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, after that, it became like my, my goal to get signed to IMG Speakers Bureau. So uh, Emily Panassi, who was um, the, the manager, all of us for, for Miss USA, she's no longer the manager. She's moved on to a different career. But um, she worked diligently, her and Esther, to get me a meeting with IMG's Speakers Bureau. And I think by like January, February 2017, I finally got my meeting, gave them my documents, papers, auditioned, whatever, and they, they signed me. Or at least they said that I had to I would sign my contract as soon as I handed over my Miss USA crown. So I signed the contract the day after I handed over my reign uh, to Kyra. Um, and, you know, the first year I didn't get any real bookings um, that were paying. So it probably looks like people are like, oh my gosh, she's doing all this speaking. A lot of that speaking was for free. Uh, <laughs> Of the process and you know trying you to start somewhere exactly yes. exactly that pays off yes. later it pays off later so yes. yeah totally right where I, I just literally spent the first year paying out of pocket for a videographer to come with me everywhere mm -hmm. um and he, he followed me everywhere took my speeches i would take a one minute snippet post it and then after probably like 2017 in the first few months of 2018 career just took off like mm. crazy and I was just getting booked in all these places like Coca-Cola and Princeton and Butler University and uh, Dollar General and Google. And I I've gotten to, to speak at all these amazing places over the past few years. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the great things about Miss USA that it gives you a, a moment to be exposed to all these things. And then you're able to really make a uh, informed decision about what you love and don't love. Because oftentimes mm -hmm. we think we might like this. Like I thought I might have wanted to <laughs> This and then you get there and you get there you're like i kind of don't like this you know i kind of want to be alone like i don't want the cameras in my face i don't you know i don't want like the intense attention you know and i realized i kind of want a little bit of notoriety but not a lot mm -hmm. um so that's when speaking kind of came in and i realized my talents with speaking anyway um and then recently like you said i just became a nonprofit ceo which is an amazing experience so this is how this happened so last uh September I got an email where it said um uh, CEO search or something like that it was the the service women's action network who I was already on their uh distro their newsletter and all of that sure. it's like speaking new CEO and just so people know uh service women's action network it is a nonprofit 501c3 uh founded in 2007 that's dedicated uh to dedicated to professional and what's the word dedicated to impacting the lives of service women and women veterans mm -hmm. um past future past present and future so you're talking about cadets people that haven't necessarily commissioned those are going through basic training uh people that are currently in the military and those that have gotten out even back you know to previous wars mm -hmm. um so there, there's all these things that this organization does and i've already been watching them and, and staying you know, abrupt on what it is that they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I got an email for CEO search and my boyfriend was standing next to me because at the time we were living in Virginia and now we live in Hawaii, which is a whole other story. But it's Paradise. Like, Paradise. <laughs> um, but we were living in Virginia and um, I looked, I said, hey, you know, this this veterans nonprofit like is looking for a new CEO. And I went through and I looked at the qualification. Like I kind of low-key qualified a little bit. So he's like, you're probably have... overqualified, but go ahead. Oh. <laughs> overqualified <laughs> um, but I looked at the uh I looked about I looked at him and I said you know I'm thinking about applying but you know they're probably not gonna pick me I definitely gonna pick me and he's like you know what? I think you would do a really good job and I'm like you know what let me just try you know whatever so I go through and I, I apply and like a week later I get an email saying they'd like for me to come into uh do an interview it was probably like 10 slots and I picked one of the 10 slots I'm like oh it's 10 slots probably 10 people mm -hmm. um so I drive up to DC go in for the interview i see the women that i'm going against i'm like oh i'm definitely not getting this uh, <laughs> wait why so did I, you think that what was up with the other women the other women look you know they're like in their late 30s 40s 50s where i'm just assuming that they're all very experienced have ceo experience have non-profit experience which i don't have, have probably used to be generals and colonels in the military I'm <laughs> 
you know, I'm, I'm definitely not getting this. Mm -hmm. So when I, I, it's the same mentality I had with you. I say, probably not going to win, but I'm just going to go in there and be myself and just yeah. see what happens. You know, that's just how you have to take life. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I walked in, I was just like, let me just go through it, tell them about myself. And I ended up getting a call like a month after that saying that they were down to the last two candidates. And I was one of them. I'm like, oh, you and right. someone else. That's oh, right. Like, oh my God, I got first order up with this position. <laughs> yes. So <laughs> I'm just so doubting myself, right? Mm -hmm. So then I go through and um, I, I, I send them my references. And eventually I get the call that I got it. And you know what's crazy about me applying is that last summer I told myself, Bashana, you know, you're, you're doing so great in speaking, but are you really living in your truth? And I realized I'm just not kind of living in my truth because my truth is based in, in veterans. And though a lot of my motivational speaking speeches had to do with PTSD, mental illness, and all these mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. I did not feel like I was truly living in my purpose, my, 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 the things that I believe God called me to do, which is to assist service members, especially female service members, because we have our own level of battles. Um, mm -hmm. So when I got the position, I, I've never felt more um, living in my purpose than I do right now. And I speak, I still speak. My, mo my speaking career is not gone. It is staying the same. I'm just mm -hmm. balancing both. Um, and it just, it just goes to show that oftentimes Miss USA being one and and, and the CEO position being the second, we really have to be willing to take chances. Even when we have the, the biggest level of doubt in our head, which doubt you just can't prevent, you just have to go for it, guys. What, whatever it is, just go for it. And I think that's one of the things I'm thankful about from Miss USA, that it gave me the, the, this like fearlessness to go for it, even though I'm assuming I'm going to fail. And oftentimes um, the platform itself is a beautiful experience. Exactly. Well, and I think you you address something that I think a lot of women face, which is the imposter syndrome, you know, going into that situation being like, oh, everybody must know what's going on. And I'm the least qualified person. And then you ended up getting the role because, you know, clearly people saw value in your experiences and your qualifications. And I think, you know, that's so important for people to hear. And I know that we're like running out of time. This is so sad. <laughs> Okay, guys, 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 if Deshauna will agree to it, hopefully yes. we'll do another live. You'd be down? Okay, okay. Oh, I'm we'll down. do another live because there are so many questions. Seriously, our yeah. question box is full. I haven't even gotten to any of the questions on the question box. And the questions that you guys sent me, we haven't even reached them yet because, Sorry. I mean, seriously, this conversation has been amazing, amazing. Thank so you. we'll definitely do another one. Um, but what we're going to try to get one last question in, if we can make it like a 30 second to one minute answer. This is like top five again at Miss USA. Deshauna, what is the best advice you ever received? And then we'll close. The best advice I have ever received is that not everyone is happy for your win, but that doesn't make your win any less worthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that as a pageant girl, we're all going to relate. But that, that's, I'm going to leave it at that because I'm going to start going on a tangent. But, but yes, got, that, that's the best advice I've ever gotten. And I think it's helped me through everything that I've gone through in life. So. I love it. And it's very valuable advice and, and, it's, and certainly advice that, that everybody wants to hear. So, guys, throw some, throw some applause in those comments because Deshauna was amazing. Amazing. It was so <laughs> great to have you on here. And we'll talk and schedule another live because I know, seriously, tons of questions in the question box and tons of questions on my little paper here that we didn't get to. Yes, um, I feel bad. let's do it too. I got don't you. feel bad. I mean, seriously, I think this was information that people wanted to hear, information that people have been asking about. And so we'll, we'll definitely hook up and, and be able to do another one. So thank you so much for being on, Deshauna. Seriously, I'm fangirling right now. As we sit <laughs> yes, like, I'm fangirling. I'm fangirling. I'm on live with Miss USA. I'm happy. <laughs> You're amazing. And you're doing an amazing job. I don't know how often you hear that, but you're doing an amazing job, girl. So oh, proud you. of you. It's not easy, but good for you. You're you're knocking them dead. And I just, I'm so proud of everything that you've done up to this point. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm glad to have your support. So, so thank you. And thanks, y'all. We'll, we'll let you know we'll be posting about the next time we'll do a live together. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do it. <laughs> thanks, y'all. See ya. Bye, <laughs>